Hello and welcome everybody, I am Tactical Pikachu, and today we have a special guest on to talk about the current YouTube landscape. This is Mike from COA Creators. How's it going everybody? Mike, what do you do and what are your qualifications as a YouTube consultant? Well, um, we, we have a team of researchers that follows existing consultants right now that are YouTube certified and we compile information from all of those credible sources. Um, so I'm not actually YouTube certified at the moment, but I will be working on getting that done next year. So for the most part, we just help consult on channels and we help them to find their value because we believe that every content creator deserves the chance to reach their full potential. So we help in any way, shape or form that we possibly can, whether that's helping with additional exposure or teaching about how metadata works and how YouTube organizes videos. Um, really just anything that will lead people to success is something that I'm interested in helping with. Awesome. Can you give us a brief summary on what has happened with YouTube over the last year in respects to the adpocalypse? Yeah, basically what happened was there were some unsavory videos with ads on it and it was right around the same time when the largest YouTuber PewDiePie had put out some controversial videos containing some jokes about Jews and basically they were correlated uh, they, they were pieced together by a lot of people but in all actuality uh, there were a couple I think I think and and I'm I think I recall it being Isis propaganda that had ads uh, was the main concern so of course everybody freaked out everybody wanted to pull their ads off of YouTube um, and then we fast forward a little bit right the problem was kind of <clears throat> excuse me the problem was kind of getting solved um, and then we had some more issues and then we had uh, you know everything being demonetized again uh, you know vulgar vulgarity was being censored uh, certain types of content was being censored you know the LGBTQ community had all their stuff censored um, you know so they were pretty upset about that they just there was just a lot going on and a lot of people were being demonetized or uh, there was this. There were hints that possible, poss possibly there were black. There was blacklisting going on, um, and then moving forward again, we had uh, uh, the kids, the kids, the kids debacle, and basically there was just a lot, of, a lot of content that shouldn't have been on the app for children. So a lot of uh, a lot of hardships for YouTube this year, and unfortunately, they didn't handle it in the best way. Uh, instead, they they caused creators to suffer for a lot of really their own mistakes and lack of uh, uh, their own oversight, basically, of some of these issues. Speaking of the uh, kids channels controversy, what's your personal thoughts on that? Well, in my opinion, um, it, it's kind of it's a two sided thing. Um, on the one hand, I think it is it's disgusting to try to manipulate the algorithm to target children just to make money. Uh, and there are laws in place to try to help protect children. But marketing to children is obviously a really it's a smart thing for companies to make money. But I don't I don't think it's necessarily right simply because they're not always capable of really making good decisions. Kids aren't. I mean, that's why they're, you know, that's why there's consent laws and you got to be a certain age to give consent um, for things like that. And then you have the other side, which is, you know, parents, if, if you're going to, if you're going to allow your children to have sort of free range or at least give them, you know, an app to watch YouTube videos, you should really monitor them and really just check in from time to time on, on what they're watching. And that's not to say that parents are inherently bad if they're not always able to or if they get caught up being busy and that's just one way that you know they can preoccupy their children it's not necessarily that saying that but it's just saying it's always good to just be mindful of what's going on right with with your with your kids it never hurts to check in i mean they're your kids so it can't possibly be that bad to to, to check in with them basically so awesome uh, with all of that in mind, uh, how do you think this affects creators with both many subscribers and just a few? Well, 
it it doesn't it doesn't really matter how many subscribers you have to be honest it's gonna affect everyone kind of the same it doesn't really look like they've it, it looks like small channels got hit and big channels got hit um what what really hurts is the watch time minutes uh because that's what actually drives the youtube's algorithm the most so if it's affecting that and it wasn't <laughs> that's kind of the thing is like all of these horrible things that were happening actually generated more um then it would be then it would be really bad for subscribers what uh what's what's really horrible is the ad revenue that was coming from those verified views from an increased amount of watch time minutes for these youtubers that were doing it as their livelihood now obviously it sucks that there's lots of content creators that aren't able to grow maybe because of it but at least they weren't relying on it to pay their bills right at least they probably had a full-time job or a part-time job that they were doing and they still have their security blanket rather than you know being all into youtube and then getting screwed over like that right uh in your opinion how do you think youtube looks moving forward um I'm I'm curious to see what 2018 brings, but I think we're gonna just I think we're gonna see just more re uh, uh, reiterations of the same types of content. Um, YouTube's gonna crack down, but I think we're still gonna see clickbait. I think we're still gonna see fake drama. I think I think we're still gonna see diss tracks. Um, we're still gonna see problems between the top creators. You know, things are going to be said, offensive things are going to be tweeted out and, and blown out of proportion sometimes. And it, it's just a perpetuating cycle of negativity, in my opinion. I think moving forward, if YouTube really wants to help make a positive difference, they should. It's it's not it's not it, not to say like. How should I say this? Because I, I really, I truly believe in, in, in the freedom to say whatever you want. I mean, you can, regardless of what a piece of paper says anyway, you can still do it. You're just not above the consequences of doing it. Um, but it's, it, it's going to be tricky for them. They're going to have to, they're going to have to find that, that, that line not to cross, but to stay on where, they're still able to support their creators because there's channels like iDubs and and Raka Raka that are being demonetized like left and right, and yet they're some of the best content creators on the site. Um, you know, they do some of the some of the greatest work that there is on YouTube. So I just hope that YouTube realizes that there are companies out there that do want to support these types of creators, and they make it easier for those creators to get paid for what they're doing because they're making youtube so much money i guess um if anything more transparency would be great from youtube but i don't know if that's going to happen right now if i was a new content creator today starting up my first channel um do you think youtube is open to me in its current state yes and i i do truly think so um i think the hardest thing is just getting seen everything else in terms of of, of, of availability for professionalism and equipment and all that kind of stuff that that stuff is so easily accessible now it's it's not difficult to get a good camera it's not difficult to get a good microphone and to get good audio recording uh, software all that stuff is either you know sometimes free or cheap or there's sales and you know there's branding um, graphics packages and there's you know Fiverr is, uh, you know, just an, an example of some of the cheap ways you can get a good professional look for your channel. So they're open to it. It's just figuring out what you need to do to get YouTube's algorithm to pop so your videos can start seeing more exponential growth, essentially. It's just hard to be seen. Uh, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. So what advice do you have for those new creators trying to start their own brands on YouTube? I would say before you do anything, you literally need to figure out a couple things. You need to figure out your niche. Like what are, what are you really good at? What value are you going to be bringing to the channel? Like why should people subscribe to you over the millions of other channels that are out there? 
And then you need to be honest, transparent, and you need to give. Um, I think if you're, I think if you're doing, I think if you're doing those things, you, the type of audience that you attract will be positive and respect you, and they'll reinforce your ambitions. Um, I just really think there's just too many creators that are getting on the channel. They want to get big quick. They want to find success. They want to do sub for sub. They want to do shout out Sundays. They want to, you know, do fake giveaways. Oh, here's all this money in um, Roblox. You know, oh, <laughs> like and subscribe and get free Roblox. Oh, insane trick to get free money in or whatever. Call of Duty skins, whatever. Um, that, that that content is a dime a dozen and it will not help you grow. So. My advice is to literally sit down and work out a plan for the whole year, write down your goals, and think about what people will say about your channel in the future. This is a really good exercise that Tim Schmoyer actually recommends from video creators. And it basically goes this way. It's think about what you wanna see people saying about your channel in the future when you, ha when you have become successful. And that will help you work towards that because you can, you can visualize it awesome hey well i want to thank you very much for coming on and doing this interview with me hopefully we have learned something here and you guys have become more informed as content creators uh what do you think do you think there are other ways creators can grow on youtube let me know what you think in the comments below and if you like this style of content then consider subscribing and sticking around for another video like this every single week i am tactical pikachu and i will catch you all later see ya